The D2R ladder reset is likely just around the corner. In previous seasons, the devs have been stellar at bringing in new and exciting items to spice things up. And just in case the devs are busy, designing other games, or dealing with other shit, I've put together five new rune words that if added to D2R would not only expand the PVM meta, but would also help balance PVP. Of course, I did have some guidance from some brilliant minds in the Discord. Buckle up, softies, because it's about to get real. Some of you may know, the devs often pull from the list of unused rune words that's already programmed into D2R. In the spirit of creativity, I've done the same for today's video. Thinking through so many things, PvP, PvM, all of the different builds that could use and abuse the rune words, all of these things are extremely difficult. Content creators, and me in particular, have a tendency to sit back and sort of criticize when bad decisions are made, but not really knowing and seeing firsthand how difficult those decisions are to make. That being the case, I spent far too much time putting these together than I care to admit to, but I hope you like them. The first proposed rune word change for season three of Ladder, Madness. It's like picture the rune word name is, is actually on it. I couldn't add it in without this, without it poofing on me. This would be a rune word for two socket class specific items. Finally, orbs have a rune word that's worth rolling in them. Now, before you look at this one and think that Saul and Ith are a little too low for a little too much, Think about how many times you're going to have to roll this. Your descent into madness will likely start with how many Saul, Ith, and Hell runes you're going to need to roll the skill tree that you want. And to go further, plus three to that skill tree. While this rune word might seem very powerful at first glance, let's take a deeper look. While it might be useful in a playthrough, it would require a player to actually find a good base, which is the rarest part of most good rune words anyway. Even early on, the other added bonuses with items like Spirit will probably outweigh what could be made in any of these weapons or shields. If druids and barbs, however, would catch a lucky break with their class-specific helms in a playthrough, I don't think many people would complain about it. In the mid to late game, however, assassins would love to find a nice claw base with plus three to sentry on it and two sockets. These again are extremely rare. In the late game, magic plus six claws would actually be better due to the socket availability. In PvP, a lot of barbs seek out plus six battle orders helms just so that they can put them in their cube and and pre-buff before a duel. Also, for very specific matchups, a druid will seek out a plus six to NATO helm. And when you consider that that matchup is against a bone necro, the most powerful build in PvP currently, no one really cares. With these runes being used in particular, low level duelers would also benefit slightly from this rune word. But even at level 30, there are better choices in nearly every slot. By the very least, this item would be a decent temp in PvP and would lower the overall cost of entry into some builds. Next up, Fortune's Favor. This item aims to solve some of the same problems that the devs tried to address with the recent addition of Wisdom, but goes a little bit further. The cannot be frozen attribute isn't found on nearly enough items in this game, especially at low levels. This item aims to fix that, all while offering a little bonus to the builds that would actually value that attribute. In this case, faster run walk and attack rating bonuses. This addition alone would be great for low level dueling, but most likely would be a stash item used only in certain matchups. In early game playthroughs, this is both desirable and obtainable. Speedrunners could reasonably farm this on a helm, and early ladder reset builds that are based on attack speed would certainly value obtaining this item as an early temp. To go further, until a player finds an ethereal thief's crown and a cham rune, this could actually serve as best in slot for a gold finding mercenary because of the 100% extra gold find on the item. A cheap rune word that's great early on and useful in the end game, but eventually gets replaced. Enough of this cheap shit. Let's talk about some meta breakers, shall we? It's time to get into the good stuff. The purpose of this next item is to shift the focus of certain builds and prevent them from being pigeonholed into giving up their armor slot for Enigma. We call this one Mystery, which basically means the same thing. Uh, and, and I also used the same runes, which is sort of mysterious if you think about it. Trigger warning for you softies. This item will shock you, but if something is going to take the place of Enigma, it can't just be some shit item and actually replace the Enigma. It has got to be something good. So this is what we've done. 
We've allowed it to be made in a helm. Doing this obviously opens up the armor slot for things like Fortitude, Bramble, COH, and Viper Magi. But in doing this, we need to be careful and consider all of those things. By removing the plus two to skills on this variant, we force most casters who would go this route to give up damage and other very important things by sacrificing the helm slot. We've rewarded other attack speed based builds by adding 20% IAS onto the item. Instead of a huge strength boost, this should instead roll 15 to 20 to all attributes, which depending on how you look at it, is less than you would get from the actual Enigma. Assassins will love this helm. The IAS will allow them to finally be able to use different best in slot claws other than runic talons and greater talons, and allow them to hit the 102 FCR breakpoint without needing Griffin's Eye, an otherwise pointless helm on a trapper. This also allows Ghost Sins to more easily reach the 102 cast breakpoint while donning Fortitude, which will be insanely cool to see in PvP. Boazons, Javazons, Barbarians, and some Paladins will love this option as well. Those builds are currently mid-tier at best when compared to the top two builds, Druids and Necros. Of those two builds, likely neither of them will choose this option and they will probably stick with the old school Enigma. The best changes that have ever come to this game have been ones that force players to make important decisions. This would be one of those changes in my opinion. Do you agree? Let me know down below. The most appropriate name in this list for the next item is Broken Promise. Imagine the Priest of Rathma breaking their sacred vows to protect the visceral powers of the Dark Priest. Broken Promise would give players the ability to proc Amplify damage on hit and Corpse Explosion on kill, giving them much needed area of effect damage on these melee builds. We also put teleport charges on this shield to allow melee characters to utilize all of the tools at their disposal to maximize damage while not worrying about needing Enigma to teleport to their favorite farming area. This would especially scale well in higher player difficulties, which is something that melee builds have struggled with for years. Perhaps what's even more impressive about this shield is that it encourages its user to use something other than grief as their main melee weapon. Why? Because weapons with high amounts of crushing blow are actually better paired with this item. Last Wish might be the first thing that pops into your mind. However, that weapon blinds its target when it hits, which overwrites the amp curse. So it's not the best choice. Instead, the very powerful yet underutilized weapon, Death, couples very well with this shield. Furthermore, Titan's Revenge on Jab or Fend Zons also works very well. Not to mention, Blade Fury Sins can absolutely wreck with this shield. While at first it might seem like it's overpowered, on those builds? You gotta figure, those builds aren't even close to the top tier of clear speed, nor will they likely be with the introduction of this shield. However, they'll be a lot closer, and the playstyle of those characters with this additional item will be quite fun. And the ultimate item that I'm really hoping gets implemented in some future patch of D2R is this one. We drew a lot of inspiration for this next one from the rune word death, which we've already mentioned is quite underutilized. While the rune word death attempts to make an honest effort at increasing the attack rating on the item, that 20% bonus to attack rating and the inherent 50 that gets added from the rune isn't actually that significant in practice. Instead, we take that to an entirely new, actually reasonable level on this rune word by adding a percent bonus and a fool's mod bonus. We're sacrificing two item slots here for one, so this should certainly be worth it. We also put some additional abilities at the bottom of this weapon, all to make up for the fact that again, you're sacrificing two items for one here. But having this exact amount of increased attack speed on the build actually allows shape-shifting druids to hit certain breakpoints, along with barbarians to hit certain whirlwind breakpoints with this two-handed weapon. But the coolest thing about this item in particular, on top of the fact that it has a level 15 vigor aura when equipped, is the fact that it gives plus one to charge, and this is to any class. That's really the big kicker and all of the fun really about this item. Not only could this be used for mobility, potentially replacing Enigma on certain builds, but when you think about it, it's really only viable in a couple of different builds. The class that would likely utilize all of the stats to their highest degree with this item is the Barbarian, which is currently at the bottom of the ranks when it comes to PvP. New players find it particularly challenging in the Bloodmore to run a Barbarian because you have to catch just 
about every character that you're dueling. And it's extremely hard to catch characters teleporting around and requiring the pilot of the Barbarian to not only teleport on top of that character, but then execute perfect attacks, whether it's chain zerking or whirlwinding. Having charge in a Barbarian's arsenal would not only feel good for the player that's using the Barbarian, but it'd give them new tricks and new ways to catch their opponents. The charge and vigor aura are very important tools that I think will spice up PvP and some PvM gameplay as well. Regardless, these are some rune words that we have mulled over and tested and I think would be a good addition to Diablo 2 Resurrected in its current state. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments.